Hey guys, my name is Ryan Central and welcome to Hitscan. We have Act 2 coming up with Killjoy with Deathmatch, but we also have some patch notes for patch 1.05 and it has some raise nerfs in it which are quite interesting. Yet again, I am joined by Miska as we go over these changes. Hello, hold up. And I guess let's start with that with raise. First of all, we have the showstopper where its equip time has been increased, so it takes a little bit longer by 0.3 seconds to bring out the rocket launcher. The equip time is also longer too. If you just pull out the showstopper, put out your gun, then bring back the showstopper, that's a bit longer. The VFX has been reduced for firing it, as well as the trail. So these aren't massive changes to her ultimate, but I still think kind of impactful with how quickly you can pull out the ultimate. Yeah, I don't really know if this is actually going to change too much. I mean, it really is, of course, the equip time and such that might let you actually kill her and react. I think this is where I think Worlds talked a little bit about this. Getting these types of changes right, the sort of 0.3 seconds in particular, is something that there are definitely a couple devs on the Valorant team that play so, so much that they're really passionate about getting these timings to feel just right. So this might be enough to, well, actually shift that in the right way we do have some dev comments with this. They say with the lethality of the ultimate, we wanted to make some changes that will provide enemies more time to plan and acquire rays when they hear fire in the hole. Additionally, we've adjusted the VFX to be able to notice rays as she fires, increasing the ability to shoot a rays that takes riskier plays. I wanted to bring this up, Miska, because this is similar to what you said before when we heard that rays was getting nerfs to hold, being able to trade a rays before she gets a kill or as she gets a kill. I think if we see a lot more of that in particular, then that's a great change to raise because that's the problem with the ultimate, that you can bring it out, it's not too much of a risky play, you can get an easy frag without risking too much from yourself. So if raise becomes a little bit more mortal when using her ultimate, that could be quite impactful in that case. Yeah, definitely. It's the sort of change that I think you should really see maybe almost a bit earlier because it felt like that just was never really happening. Even when you know that there's a race coming around the corner or even like in front of you pulling out the showstopper, even then it's really difficult to get the kill before the rocket's at least gone off and she just trades one for one. So even if she dies herself, it's been difficult. This might help that, but hey, yeah, it's gonna take a little while to feel if this is good or not. There are some devs that are passionate about getting these types of small number changes, the 0.3 second window change here, just right. So I'm confident that they've tested this enough to the point where they're happy with it. It's just a matter of, is this enough? And it might be, together with the other nerf, to the blast pack, actually. So yeah. they've uh, decreased the damage here from 75 to 50 and the damage to objects now consistently does 600. So if you want to destroy a sage wall or something like that, that's cool. But if you want to destroy your enemy, then, well, not as cool anymore. They reduce that damage by 25, which is quite significant, especially because 75 plus 75 meant 150 and you were just kind of deleted immediately. Now that's a little bit more manageable, and especially if you don't get hit dead on, it should be more than the doable to just sort of survive that and brush that off. But yeah, liking that, they've said that Razor Blast Pack has been hitting players a bit too hard, able to kill a fully armored enemy in certain situations. We want to reduce this ability's efficacy at damaging players while sharpening its ability at clearing enemy utility and obstacles. I think this has a lot to do with Killjoy's abilities as well. The fact that damage to objects now consistently does 600. I wonder if you could cheese like some of the weeklies when it comes to doing like 35k damage. By just using the blast pack on like a sage Ooh, wall. Oh yeah, not thought about that. That that, that yeah. could be good, but I guess yeah, it's kind of like you know as well if you're on a save eco round like you like to do misco holding a shot in double doors and you don't have any armor, you can still get punished by the blast pack by a raise if she's privy to you being there. So I quite like the damage change and that it consistently does uh, infinite damage effectively to her uh, objects. Because Raz has been sort of touted as being a counter to Cypher because of the utility that he has. And because Killjoy is so similar to Cypher in regards to how they both anchor sites with certain forms of utility, I think this is just to make sure that Raz still has that potency and still has that counter ability when it comes to uh, Sentinels and anchor sites like Cypher and Killjoy and Sage too with the wall to be fair. So. I'm glad that they went after Raze in this fashion with the Blast Pack, but she still has that identity of being 
the tip of the spear when it comes to breaking onto a site. Yeah, we'll see if it's enough. We'll see what happens. I'm sure Morello will give us an update on his stream next time someone brings it up in like a week or whatever. Anyway, competitors got us some changes too. Ranked, everybody uh, loves it. I hope at least. And we've been seeing some things around act ranks that we're not going to go into in this video, but that's going to be added with this patch. One thing though that is really interesting to see that they've added is that competitive matchmaking now will have a higher chance to match solo and solo duo players against similarly sized pre-made groups at the cost of queue times being slightly longer. I think this is really nice. I know that someone's gonna be happy. Mendo will definitely Mendo. be happy seeing yeah. this in the patch notes. Uh, so that's cool. Either way, uh, I think it's nice to see some of these changes for competitive that people have been wanting for a while. Uh, there's more stuff in here though. And uh, one of those things being seeing a little bit better how your rating is changed when you lose a bit of rating, when you lose a match. So rank indicators have been modified on a loss to provide more granularity into how your rank was changed. You can now receive rating decreased slightly, one down arrow, rating decreased, two down arrows, or rating greatly decreased, three down arrows. So previously it was a little bit difficult to know exactly how much you lost and when it really mattered and when it didn't really. And now we got a little bit more insight there. So really good stuff. Looking forward to just more quality of life changes. All in all, Ranked is starting to feel a bit more complete with the changes like this, but obviously still a long way to go. And it's only really after Act 2 where we'll fully see the effect of the Act Ranks as well being visible when all of that is completed. But regardless, looking forward to this. And uh, yeah, Ranked, looking forward to just getting started on that grind once again. Yeah, we have a bit of information on how placements work as well. I think when it comes to the Act Badges as well, because it's confused a lot of people. I'm sure once we get to game and see how it works, it's kind of like, oh, I get it. That makes sense now. It did seem needlessly complicated when he announced it, but in short, it's kind of like, we're going to base it on your average best ranks that you got in a season to show off. Kind of similar to how Overwatch does it with their seasons. So that's a nice change. I think going back to what was said about playing with more solo and duo players, I think the problem is more that you can't see who is grouped and who isn't. Like, we've been playing a lot in five stacks in, like, unrated, haven't we? And we have no idea if we're playing up against other five stacks, if we're playing up against five people solo queuing or a couple of groups here or there. I think that was something when it was added into Overwatch that was a huge help in understanding how to rate the game. If you're playing up against another five stack, you know that you really need to try hard to sort of keep up with them. But especially in ranked, if you're solo queuing and you go up against... Uh, especially if you're solo queuing and the rest of your team is in a four stack played together i think that's really important information to know so i think that's a change that riot and valorant should be wanted to do as soon as possible just letting people know who is grouped and who isn't it was mentioned as well just previously the ranked changes around initial placements now and such there's not too much to talk about here but expect a conservative initial placement roughly two rank tiers lower than your prior act one rank so we are confident you are at or above that skill in act two performance will have a large impact in your early game so you will be able to quickly gain rank if you play well and win this is just not to inflate ranks or have someone gain a ridiculous amount of rating straight off the bat and of course, regarding these new placement games, we talked about them before. You play three more games to show your rank again in Act 2 if you already had one in Act 1. And if you're a new player, you will still need to play five initial placement matches. So we have a bit more time to calibrate to your skill. All in all, pretty straightforward stuff. And like you said, Ryan, I think once people get into game and just get started playing their placements and getting all that sorted, the first week might be a little bit bumpy and all over the place, especially as servers and stuff and just general new boost of players coming back into the game kind of settles down a little bit. But after that, it should be smooth sailing. Hopefully it'll get settled pretty quickly and all of these changes actually work out and do what they're meant to do. Now we wanted to sort of go over some quality of life changes, just some other bits and pieces that aren't too impactful or can be impactful, it's just not really as exciting as a raise nerf, for example. The first two I wanted to mention is that players who report other disruptive plays will now get an email if the reported player gets punished. And also mid patch, your rotating store offers will stop including things that you already own, which I think is a great change. Match history is going to be a thing in the game that your friends can see and you can see your friends career tab via something called a context menu in the social panel. This means that you can see your friends rank, act rank and also match history. So 
don't look at mine is all I'm going to ask for all of the friends that I have on. And also for all of the people in the esports scene, you can now select custom games that allow the leader to select your target game pod location and see players pings to that game pod. It's like a big thing at the moment in EU where say like a Turkish team is playing a Swedish team, they need to try and find like a German server somewhere so they both have equal pings. So this is a nice change to enable I think more consistent tournaments, certainly over NA as well, that's going to be uh, a bit of an issue too when you have like East Coast and West Coast teams playing up against each other. But apart from that, we know Killjoys come in, we know that Deathmatches come in, a 10 player free for all, first to 30 kills with a time limit of 6 minutes, no abilities, all the guns that you want, I think operators might get nerfed in that game after a while because I imagine that's going to be a bit obnoxious. Oh, real quick with things to sort of mention, Silver's Eldron doesn't rotate as slow, it doesn't feel like it's got 20 kilograms attached to the bottom of it, that should be a lot faster. The rain of full heal bug that was happening has been fixed uh, and Phoenix can no longer plant the spike off the site with the run it back as we saw with a couple of the bugs. So. Some interesting stuff in here, there's like a phase clan tournament in two days, so I'm really interested to see if the pros pick up the new agent this soon. I'm doubtful, but we'll see. But yeah, thanks for watching. Certainly keep an eye on the channel, there's going to be some cool stuff coming. But other than that, I'm pretty sure we've covered everything. We're just waiting for Killjoy and the Battle Pass now, Miska. Yes, Killjoy and Battle Pass, both very exciting things. We have some separate content, of course, on, on that stuff, so make sure to check that out. Hit the bell uh, if you've not hit the subscribe button already, make sure to hit that one too, of course. And to not miss those uh, videos, they should be coming out in a, well, I guess a few hours or just tomorrow. All in all, very exciting patch, quite a lot of content, definitely the biggest patch since launch. And I'm looking forward to seeing how Killjoy kind of spices up the meta, or at least just generally which characters are picked to kind of maybe deal with Killjoy, or just how much Killjoy is picked if people want to pick her all the time, or if people are a little bit scared to pick her up in case they mess up with the, the new agent. Regardless, exciting stuff, exciting times, and all of this should be hitting in not too long. Follow us on Twitter or check us out there and check out @playvalorant on Twitter for any information around the patch exactly when that hits. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye bye.